because I haven't been here through the whole thing, I did want to ask if anybody has addressed or is addressing the learning commons. It will be addressed later on, yeah. So let me get, let me give you the uh, the heads up version. Um, as you've probably seen, the construction uh, is beginning now. Yes, more parking space is going to disappear. Sorry about that. Um, but what we're doing on the front and the back of the Perry Library is on the front um, is to expand out into the parking area so that there will be a very nice flow through into the building. We're going to get rid of that horrid metal staircase thing that, that's... Um, but, but, somebody designed and was very proud of, I'm sure, but anyway, that's going to go. Um, there'll be a little cafe uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the corner there, but mainly the learning commons will be an area where the, um, the t technology will be there for the students and there'll be people to help the students so that they feel comfortable and we've got them into the library, which is you know, part of it. And then on the other side, we'll have the Student Success Centre, which is where the tutoring and the testing and um, a lot of the academic advising will be at that point. So that there isn't the stigma of going off to find tutoring because it's the same place as the, as the testing centre. They'll be going in and out of there anyway. Their friends aren't going to know if there's a, you know, if they're going there to get help or not. They're just, you know, they're just going to the library, folks, you know, going to the learning commons. Um, and I think that will be a great, great thing for us. I'm glad you'll hear a little bit more about that. The aim, re the aim really is to consolidate all of the different services that they need, academic services that they need together in one place. Um, so also the internships and co-ops and all of those things will all be there. It'll be a good place, I think, a, a good flow through. It'll be very exciting when it gets going. And I think it will help with our overall retention because one of the focus areas for the university is to increase retention because we spend a lot of money getting students here, so we want them to succeed when they are here. Retention is usually measured as the first year to second year. That's you know, so freshman to sophomore. That's the, that's the official number that the US News and World Reports you know, come out with. When they talk about retention, that's what they mean. When we look at our statistics, we're very similar to many other universities in that, yes, that's the time we lose more students that don't come back. But we also lose students from the uh, second to third year and third year to fourth year. And there are students who make it all the way through five years of an undergraduate degree, because many of them have five-year degrees, and still don't graduate. They, you know, they just sort of fizzle out in the end. Um, so there are a number of different things. Now, those numbers are few. We're down to a couple of percent at that time. But still, we, at that point, if they put in five years at the university, we should be able to get them graduated. In, um, and so we need to have all of those different pieces in place. Um, one, one reason, of course, that the number of students don't graduate is um, with a high military population, they get transferred. They get sent out to military duty. Um, we've got in place now a new agreement with San Diego State University because a lot of our students from Norfolk get transferred over to the West Coast and their students get transferred over here. The current system is that once they transfer out of the university, we can't count them, so they count as a loss, so we didn't retain them. What we're doing now is setting up an agreement with San Diego State that if they're active military students and they transfer over to the West Coast, then they will continue to get their OD, ODU degree, but f with the classes at San Diego State, and vice versa. Now, obviously, they have to have done a certain amount of their work here first. Um, but, so they will still be counted as ODU students, but they will be under the wing of, of San Diego State. And similarly, we will have some of their students here. And that at least will mean that that group will, will continue through. Because right now, because of that transfer, it made it too difficult for them. Many of them would simply stop. Um, they'd say, well, we didn't want to have to try and transfer or satisfy the home, the new institution's requirements. Now, it won't work for every program, understood. I mean, there's going to be somewhere where that, that transfer won't be um, quite as seamless as we'd like, but it will work for a lot of students. So that, that's something we can do. In the middle, I think the big thing we see is that if students are engaged in something else, such as one of the clubs, one of the um, activities, athletics, those kinds of things. Those are when students, you know, begin to get a sense of I'm at the university and I'm an ODU student and I'm, you know, in a leadership program, whatever it would be. Those extramural things are also good. 
couldn't go too far. I knew one student that um, in a different institution who seemed to be about to try and graduate in in extramural studies. You know, to all of all of that student's time was was devoted to you know being president of this and that, and not not enough on the uh, on the coursework. But I think having something like that is good too, and and we certainly encourage it. How am I doing for time? I'm doing fine. Okay. I've talked mainly about the students um, where we feel we have a problem, or they feel they have a problem, or all of us have to work on it. I don't want to forget the other end of the scale. We have some superb students here. One of the great things about being relatively open access is we get some terrific people. And we are now increasing the amount of emphasis on undergraduate research. Um, I just got my budget documents today, um, for, well, strictly speaking, last night, from um, the budget office. And in there, uh, one of the things I'd asked for was for more funds in, in support of undergraduate research opportunities. So that we have. Uh, we will be gradually, over the next few years, increasing the amount of funds that we have for undergraduate students engaged in research, and also putting in place some faculty matching grants. So if you have an external grant um, and can support an undergraduate um, student in, the, in your laboratory or in, in your scholarship, we will match that to make sure that the student gets housing during the summer um, and gets a, a small stipend so that they can survive during the summer. And they don't go off and get a job somewhere else, but they stay right here working with you. So that's something that we're going to use. You'll hear more about with the, from that because we do know that the very bright students are very interested in getting engaged in research early on, um, not, not necessarily just in their senior years, but it can be in, in their sophomore and junior years too. We'll be providing more support for students to enter in competitions uh, nationally, regionally, so that you know they can get out and see see um, the world and and know how good they are, and that other universities can see how good our students are. Um, one of the areas that um, we'll also focus on is making sure that we display the student achievements more widely, both on the website and in materials that we distribute. I think we're quite good about telling the world about the faculty achievements, although we can always do more of that, because there's always more to do, there's always lots of achievements. But we don't say very much about our student achievements, so we want to be um, you know, emphasizing those more. And finally, just to wrap up, um, we do want to make sure that we don't forget that we are a graduate institution as well. This is, we are a doctoral granting institution. We have strong graduate programs. We have some of the best in the country in particular areas. And um, we want to make sure that that is maintained. That's really the reason why I've asked that each of the colleges uh, really take ownership of their own graduate students and not have um, somebody in my office being the sort of the, the person to oversee what's going on. Really, it really needs to be at the college level. And because nobody knows the graduate students better than the department and the, you know, their advisors. So that's really where that needs to be. In some departments, some colleges have done a great job. Others have tended to let the students you know, drift around a little bit, and we want to avoid that. So we're working to really affirm that this is a great place to be for graduate students. Um, I've always been um, trained that the, um, the, the ideal pattern for a student is to do their undergraduate degree in one place and their graduate degree in another. Um, at the same time, a lot of our students are place-bound for reasons that they can't be helped. It's, again, our military population, but not only them. And so let's make sure that if we do have students who've had an undergraduate degree here and are going on to a graduate degree, that they get the full range of experience. So it's not too narrow. They don't just have the same professor all the way up. You know, they, they get a different point of view. Um, but more accountability, I think, for graduate student success at the department and college level is something we'll be emphasizing. And then finally, tracking the students, um, because the real evidence of success for graduate students is going out and being placed into either academia or into industry or business or you know professional world, um, that when they've got that graduate degree, the culmination of what can be as many as eight years or more for some students, you know, they've finally got that diploma and they've been hooded, that 
they don't then say, well, you know, now I don't have a job. They, they actually do have something that they're going toward. So more mentoring for, for the graduate students um, as, as they progress forward. So I think that, that about wraps up what, what I wanted to say to give you an idea of my philosophy. Um, I think the final comment would be that I know particularly pre-tenured faculty often feel that they're, they're getting mixed messages because on the one hand they hear that, well, the, the only thing that really matters to get tenure is the research. And then on the other hand you'll hear, well, you know, teaching is very important. And so very often student, the, um, the, fa sorry, the, the junior faculty will say, well, which is it? You know, am I supposed to do research? Am I supposed to be a, a good teacher? And the answer is yes, both. I was taught right from the early ages, back when I was in the dark ages, back when I was at Virginia Tech, the department chair, when I joined that department said, we expect you to be the best you can possibly be in the area of research. And we expect you to be the best you can possibly be as a teacher. And that really sums it up. It's finding that balance, doing the very best you can in both of those areas. Uh, and that's the key to success, and I think it's the key to our students' success too. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. So.